It's quiet now. The first season is over. For the time being, the games have ceased. The stands appear empty. But filling the Coliseum is the aura of a new legacy. The legacy of Hornet Pride. Rebound. The memories of this inaugural season will forever be embraced by Charlotte's beloved fans. Some said it could never happen in the league's smallest city, but in a region rich in basketball tradition, there was never a doubt. It is a team comprised of seasoned veterans and future stars. And with a little luck, this would be the season that made Charlotte shout. Breaking ground on the dawn of a new era in Charlotte. A state-of-the-art facility was to be built. And a prominent local entrepreneur was driven by the vision of pro basketball in North Carolina. Traveling to New York with a dream, George Shin Wild League officials in Charlotte became the first of four cities to be awarded an NBA franchise. Charlotte's moment had arrived and Shin returned home to a hero's welcome. I lost control. I got very emotional. Uh, here's a guy that struggled all his life, that uh, graduated last in high school and through his whole business career has had to struggle. And to hear that was just, just overwhelming. Next, general manager Carl Shear and player personnel director Gene Littles were hired to design a team blueprint. Fans also took to the drawing board. Shin initiated a Name the Team campaign in which he solicited suggestions from the community. Originally dubbed the Spirit, the team was unanimously renamed the Hornets. And once again, the people of Charlotte were abuzz with civic pride. After an extensive search, Dick Harder, a longtime assistant with Detroit and Indiana, was named head coach. The grand design was nearing completion. In June, the order of business was to find the best available NBA talent in the expansion draft to fill out Charlotte's empty roster. Chosen were sharpshooting Del Curry and spark plug Muggsy Bogues. And in a trade, Kelly Trapuca was acquired from Utah. The future was close at hand. For the eighth pick in the draft, and their first in the NBA, the Charlotte Hornets select Rex Chapman of Kentucky. At 20, this college standout would be the youngest player in the NBA. Another recruit was designer Alexander Julian. A North Carolina native, he unveiled the stylish team uniforms with the help of a model Hornet. Late arrivals Kurt Rambis and Earl Curitan were eager to start anew, and everything seemed to be falling into place. Poised on the eve of their first contest, the city of Charlotte was primed for its introduction into the NBA. Game number one. Dress rehearsal was over. Opening night jitters fill the air. Time for the Hornets to take center stage. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Charlotte Coliseum for a first. You're a part of Charlotte sports history as tonight's NBA contest features the Cleveland Cavaliers and your Charlotte Hornets. After the pregame festivities, Charlotte took to the floor to make history with their first NBA point. But it's taken by Trapuca. Head fake goes up. It's good. There's the first basket scored by Charlotte Hornets. History's been made. At halftime, Hugo the Hornet, designed by Muppeteer Jim Henson's daughter Cheryl, made his debut to rave reviews. But the final act would not go according to script, as the Hornets were unable to saddle their talented opponents. The Cavaliers would go on to win by 40 points, as Charlotte suffered their worst defeat of the season. Randolph keys to Valentine behind the back to Evo. It was all anyone could bear to watch, but a testimony of faith was about to unfold. The fact that we lost the first game by 40 points and, and nobody left their seat, and they stood and cheered as we left the court that day. The Charlotte fans give their team a standing O, and that's great. I knew that, boy, 
If this is what it's like when we lose, just think what it's like when we're going to win a game. They would not have to wonder long. Two games later, Hornet hysteria engulfed the Coliseum. With the new look Clippers in town, Charlotte pondered, would this be victory number one? Trapuca and the Hornets stung LA early. But the Clippers were quick to counter. Come on, Bobby! Charlotte called upon young gun Rex Chapman for firepower off the bench. He quickly delivered and the Hornets seized the second half advantage. But the celebrations were premature as the Clippers raced back to narrow the gap. Oh, you gotta run the court. You gotta run the court. You can't run them out of our building. Taking their coach's words to heart, the Hornets took the offensive. Sensing victory, they refused to be denied as they staunchly defended their home turf. And as they crossed the threshold of history, no one would remain untouched. Even for me, you know, all the games are won 11 years in the league. To win this one for the first time under this franchise, uh, if they'd have had a pair of scissors on the floor where all the fellas have been fighting each other to cut a part of the net off. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a part of history. The first Charlotte Hornets NBA victory. There would be many firsts this season. Down in Atlanta, Kelly Trapuca would see to one of them. Only 10 on the shot clock now. Trapuca for three. First three-point field goal for the Hornets. Charlotte would then travel west to visit San Antonio, where a hustling Earl Curitan would preserve the Hornets' first road victory. Bounce pass almost stolen by Bogues, but goes to Dawkins. Shot blocked by Curitan. Earl's one of those guys that uh, you can always depend on uh, to get the big rebound or make the big play or, or block a shot or what have you. I think Earl's always the guy uh, to get that done. Back home against the Heat, with expansion team bragging rights at stake, the Hornets got the best of their first matchup with Miami as they overwhelmed them from the onset. We just go out there and try to play hard and not give up and not be, uh, we don't try to be uh, denied. We just believe in ourselves and believe in each other. By December, Charlotte fans had become accustomed to sweating out close games. Though the Hornets had led for three quarters, an enraged Charles Barkley had Hornet fans on the edge of their seats. Brooks for a rolling Kaminsky. Oh. Underneath Charles, slipped by his man and sounds at home again. A possessed Barkley single-handedly erased Charlotte's lead, frustrating the Hornets and shredding a defense that was built around shutting him down. We gotta, we gotta get it in Kirk because they're just flat out. They're playing the zone. The top, they go instead down low. Charles, off balance, scores anyway. With Barkley staking the Sixers to a six-point lead, it was up to Rex Chapman to provide a fourth-quarter spark off the bench. And the Charlotte Coliseum came alive as the Hornets hustled to regain a three-point advantage. But Barkley would not be denied. Looking for Barkley, who jumps out high. Barkley puts it on the floor, runs to the basket, scores, and he's going to have a chance for the three-point play. With the score tied again, Charlotte set up a final play. They would have six seconds to take back the lead. Reed, Lux, Lux. Oh, Lux is all alone. He scores. Four seconds left. How can that be? And Bedlam reigned as everyone in the Coliseum knew Charles Barkley would have to be reckoned with one last time. They got it to Charles. Charles on the floor. Down the lane he runs. Goes inside and an offensive foul. They're not going to count the bucket. They're not going to count the bucket. And Jimmy Lineham is pleading his case. We had been talking the day before the game about somebody taking the charge on Barkley. And then with the game on the line, Rex and, and somebody else, you know, stood up there. He charged into me, and if they'd have called a block, the shot went in. And, you know, he'd have been at the line to win the game. So we were fortunate to get away with the win. The Hornets are fortunate to have a player of Rex's immense potential and a coach to help him maximize it. And you're right against him like that. I really think he can do that, even for a rookie. And I know you're getting tough calls. You have to, Rex. They don't let you do that, we can't play. A city consumed by Hornet hysteria, Charlotte quickly began a love affair with the golden child from Kentucky. 
In his first season, he has dazzled the NBA with his vast array of shots and pinpoint passes. Rex is a special kind of player. I've never seen a player with more confidence. It's the best shooter I've, I've seen that I've ever played with. His reputation as a pure shooter is known league-wide, but it is his thunderous dunks that bring the fans to their feet. Rex is uh, a little goofy coming from Kentucky, but uh, he's a good kid. He's uh, very easy to get along with because he doesn't really say much. Rex does his talking strictly on the court. He has his own way of commanding attention. Only two years out of high school, Chapman has captured the hearts of the Charlotte faithful, and there's little doubt that he'll continue to captivate them for years to come. Then there is the senior Hornet, the savvy veteran Robert Reed. Young at heart, his easygoing persona on and off the court gains new admirers every day. Wily veteran. He's silly. Bob is a clown. His uh, attitude towards things is, is uh, I think, what sets him apart from everybody. He's just a fun guy, and I think he has a lot of fun playing the game of basketball. You can't throw, but you can get it. Yeah. <laughs> his free spirit mirrors his style of play. Mm, gutter. No. <laughs> Coming from uh, Houston, de definitely uh, has never met a shot that he, that he doesn't like. The former Texas gunslinger returned to Houston to a standing ovation, yet this time he had hopes to blaze new trails. Next year, let's show up and just, just think about maybe we can be that ninth or eighth team that's battling for a playoff spot. I think that'd be great for us. The word was out. A special visitor was returning home. And all eyes were focused on native son, Michael Jordan. Number 23, Michael Jordan. And Jordan gave them more than their money's worth. As he and teammate Scottie Pippen slam dunk Chicago to an early advantage. Led by Michael Holden, Charlotte made a third quarter run. But Chicago's Michael was still the main attraction. And the Bulls maintained the lead. In the fourth, the Hornets looked down low to Tim Kempton. Jordan had the answer. But as Rambus got free on the pick and roll, and Trapuca buried a three-pointer, Charlotte took a two-point lead. Though Jordan managed to tie the score with 26 seconds remaining, Charlotte countered Chicago Superman with their own version of Clark Kent. Holton guiding the club at the point. 13 on the shot clock, 14 on the game clock. Kempton comes out to get the ball. Kempton dribbles down the left side, takes it baseline, almost loses it. Five on the shot clock. Reed, head fake, turns, fires, shot, blocks. Rambis with a shot, no good. Rebound, Rambis, up and in with a tap. It's good, Hornets win! Hornets win it, 103-101. The fans went crazy, the players went crazy, I went crazy. I'd never done that before. It was like we'd won the championship at that point in time. Outside, the storm had passed. But inside, the Knicks would be yet another victim swamped by a tidal wave of purple and teal as New York was outshot, out-hustled, and simply outplayed by the swarming Hornets. The first two-thirds or three-quarters of the season, we found ourselves where we were ahead of three or four of the other teams in the NBA. And that's uh, purely to the credit of our players who somehow found a way to scratch out these close wins that they've been able to get. Against a tough bullet squad, the Hornets managed to scratch out another last minute victory. Rex Chapman from three point range. 105, 101, nine seconds left. We have to play. Uh, mentally and physically tough. We have to limit our mistakes, our turnovers, and, and uh, react to the other team's turnovers and, and make that a plus for us. The game plan was working to perfection in a January contest against Philadelphia in the Spectrum. The Hornets were in search of win number 10, and in the first quarter, Trapuca put Charlotte up by six. The visitors were flawless in their execution, but the Sixers sought to stymie the explosive Hornet attack. 
Jemensky's dunk completed the resurgence as the Sixers went up 108-107 late in the fourth. And with 30 seconds left, Philadelphia looked to ice the game as Barkley's jumper made it 110-107. But the Hornets weren't ready for the deep freeze. Here goes Chapman for three, and we have a tie game. Chapman's clutch three-pointer sent the game into overtime, and in the five-minute extra period, Charlotte took over. The Hornets won it running away to notch their first overtime win. Tally Trapuca's 40-point effort was the difference as Charlotte celebrated their biggest road win to date. We went out and they spent a few extra bucks for us to, to have a couple of celebration drinks, so to speak, back in the hotel. So uh, it was definitely worth it. The next day we got over to uh, the library where Rocky ran up the stairs and we all took a team picture. So it, it was that, that much fun, that much, much an accomplishment. For two years, this former All-Star languished at the end of the Utah Jazz bench. Now, Kelly Trebuca and his new team sought retribution with a stunning victory. Eight seconds remaining. Utah, 88. Charlotte, 87. Crowd anxious. Holton gets the inbound. Comes to Trebuca. Five seconds. Down to Holton. Holton driving. Fires the layup. Walks up for the shot. It's Terry Owens at the buzzer. It's going to count. The Hornets are going to win. Hang on, it's good! Hornets win it! 89, 88! the buzzer and the stick back! And I was just standing on the other side of the basket, minding my own business, when the ball just kind of bounced down, went right in my hand. I really didn't have to move to do anything, and I just threw it up, and it went in again, right when the buzzer went off. And to have that happen twice in one season is, is actually pretty funny, especially uh, when it happens to me. The very next day, Kurt took a sentimental journey to the place he had called home to be honored one last time. So on behalf of all of us Lakers and all of you fans out there, I'd like to say thanks to Kurt, and I'd like to present him with his world championship ring. Rambis was back in town as a Hornet, but when his former teammates presented him with his fourth world championship ring, it was clear that both Kurt and L.A. had not forgotten his seven glorious years as the workhorse behind a Laker dynasty. You could just feel it, how, how much uh, it meant to him to just return and, and what it meant to everybody there in the arena. It was real emotional. It just um, the fact that my, my teammates gave me hugs, my ex-teammates gave me hugs and the fans gave me a standing ovation. That's, that's what was really special to me. I'll hold that memory for the rest of my life. Make the extra pass. That makes him play more time. Finish plays it off strongly to the basket. Don't just hope it goes so they knock it loose and run out. It's a game we can get if we want to go play and lift up our level 5%. We said we we're going to do that for the last three days. It's time to win. Let's go play. Dateline February 3rd. Crunch time against Seattle and the emergence of an unlikely hero. Nine seconds left. They're looking for Chapman. They're looking for Reed. Reed has it. Turns. Fires a pass to Kempton. Kempton. Layup. Good! Tim Kempton! 106! 108, Hornets lead by two, two seconds left. Kempton's layup with two seconds left sealed the Hornet victory, and another chapter was written in the legend of... Dr. K. Dr. K. <laughs> At 6'10", Kempton is one of the few NBA big men who can operate smoothly in the open floor. One night, he went on a little scoring rampage, and the next day, he showed up in the paper looking like Ben Casey with the... <laughs> with the little reflector on his head and everything, and let me tell you, we rode him. <laughs> <laughs> More or less one of, the, one of the sports riders after one of those games where I just dribbled the length of the quarter and dished off, and we won the game, and it was an exciting game, and he brought it out in the paper the next day. So the players got a hold of it, Kurt Rambis, and you know, they, they just didn't let it die. Moses led the New Look Hawks into the Coliseum, but it was the fast-breaking Hornets who would part the Red D. The Pacers were next to fall to Charlotte's February run. Run it, run it. We got enough guys to stay fresh. Okay, so fast up all we can score. We'll take care of the boys, but you gotta run back. Quick out of the blocks again, the Hornets swept the Spurs as Trapuca led the way with 40. 
You people mean the world to me, and I'm just thankful I'm a member of the Charlotte Hornets. Let's go out and win one. On March 8th, Kelly Trapuca scored his 10,000 career point versus the Nuggets, and Hornet management presented him with a home spa as the Coliseum roared with approval. Two nights later, they were applauding again as they bid farewell to a living legend and welcomed the newest Charlotte fan. Out West, the Hornets battled LA's other team. In defeating the Clippers for the second time, they gained their 16th victory of the season on an uplifting note. Hornets have got themselves to win. Hornets have got themselves to victory. It's been a really successful season for us and uh, just to be a part of it has been very exciting and a really nice learning experience. The Hornets were about to embark on their most successful road trip of the year. With most of the season behind, they were no longer awed by bright lights and big names. As the game began, newly acquired center Greg Kite went head-to-head -head with all-star Patrick Ewing. He helped keep it close until marksman Del Curry could put the game out of reach. Del Curry with a big two-pointer, 102-99. Showing no signs of his early season wrist injury, Curry continued to play well in Philadelphia, scoring 23 points off the bench. As he and Trapuca buried the Sixers with deadly long-range shooting. The Charlotte Hornets have win number 19. In New Jersey, Charlotte was greeted by an unfamiliar sight. Playing before a sparse crowd, the Hornets needed a lift. Muggsy's the heart and soul of our team. He's our spark plug. My kids tell me I like Muggsy because we're both short. Never short on hustle, this 5-3 Dynamo disrupted the Nets with his aggressive play. And with the hot Robert Reed scoring his 10,000 points, the Hornets reached a milestone of their own, victory number 20. Season's end, a time to rejoice. A time to reflect. The dream has become a reality. These are visions of a most promising future. Yet the indelible memories will not fade. It's good! Hornets win! Robert Reed, Robert with a jump shot. It is good! 109! The Hornets and the city of Charlotte represent a very special kind of champion. For in their inaugural year, success was measured less by wins and losses than by the triumph of the heart and the spirit of the faithful. And no one embodies this sentiment more than owner George Shin. God bless you and thank you for making this team the success it is. They're the greatest fans in the world. Following the final game, the Hornets paid tribute to their avid supporters. One by one, team uniforms were given out. Charlotte made history as they became the first expansion team to lead a professional league in attendance.